Hi, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to continue working with some properties of string objects. In our last video, we um, basically we, we created a small script which would look at the length of a string entered in this particular email box and just displayed up on the page. So, this is the script that we have so far, and now I want to add to it. In addition to knowing the length of the email, the length of the string really, and by the way this isn't the most efficient way to check for a valid email, but it was a good enough example for working with some string properties. So in addition to knowing the length of the email, I'd also like to know where the at symbol is, because an email address will contain an at symbol. So I'm going to create a variable called at POS for at position. I want to know where this at symbol is, and I'm going to find out. Email dot index of parentheses single quote at symbol single quote closing parentheses index of is a method and I want to find out its location the at symbol within email and email is a variable that I set up a little bit earlier um, so in this case email address or the email variable is equivalent to the value of whatever someone types in that text box. So I want to find out where that at symbol is, or for that matter, if there's an at symbol. Now that I've got this variable, I'm going to go ahead and modify my feedback down here. Feedback, I'm going to do a plus equals at is located at plus at POS plus and I'll just do another break tag there we go so I'm already going to display the length of the string now I want to display the location of the at symbol I'll go ahead and save this jump back over to my browser which is Chrome refresh and I'm just going to hit submit and I see my string length is zero because I didn't type anything, but notice my at symbol is located at position negative one. That's what you're going to get if that character in question is not available. So if I type in a more legitimate email address and hit submit, it's telling me that my at symbol is located at position 11. So let's count this out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Interesting. But when you're working with string positions, the first character is at position zero. So although this is this truly is a 21 character string, the first letter R here is position zero. The second R is position one. The letter P right here. I deleted the letter P is actually at position 2 okay so that's something to keep in mind alright so things look like they're working pretty well and added another character in there so let's go back and do a couple more things let's use another method okay so we know the location of the at position let's find the location of a dot because an email address will usually have at least one dot and I'm going to put in equals email dot index of parentheses single quote dot I'm sorry single quote yeah. another single quote closing parentheses there we go at dot and I'm going to make another feedback line here I'll just copy and paste the dot is located at the at dot position okay so now I'm going to find the period so I'm going to hit save I'll do a browser and let me just refresh submit information at symbol is located at negative one because there isn't one the dot is located at negative one let me put in an email address hit submit here we go the at symbol is located at position 11 the dot is located at position 17 what if you got one of those email addresses that's made up of multiple dots though what if I you know had something like uh, Ralph dot Phillips at company.com and hit submit sure enough it's telling me the position of the first period so 
Remember, the first R is position 0, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, the dot is at position 5. So that's not going to really be as helpful as we might think. So let's do a little quick modification here. Instead of the dot index of, instead of doing the index of method, let's do last index of. I want to get the last dot. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make that little save, and I'll modify my feedback to say this is the last dot not the first occurrence. I'll go ahead and refresh. Let me type in that multi.email address again. And I'll put in company.com. Here we go. So now I can see my at symbol is located at position 14. My last dot is located at position 22. And overall, this string length is 26. Excellent. All right, let's do, uh, let's do another one here. I'm going to jump over and I'll create another variable. This variable is going to be called TLD for top level domain. I want to find out what the domain is being used for the email. And that's simply going to be email.substring. Okay, so I'm going to use the substring method. And basically, that's going to give me a string within a string. And what you put in here in the parentheses is going to be the starting point. I want this to start at my last dot. So I'm going to get a substring starting at my last dot location because my last dot should proceed whether it's a dot com or a dot org or a dot edu or a dot biz or whatnot. So I'm going to display that top level domain and I'm going to do another feedback line down here. Copy, paste, and let's see, I'll go ahead and put in um, top level domain is equal to TLD. And for this one, I'm going to put a couple break tags just to give myself another space there. So I'm going to hit save, jump back over to my browser, refresh, submit information. There is no top level domain. Let me put in that ralph.phillips at company.com. Hit submit information. There we go. So my string is 26 characters long. The add is at position 14. The last dot is at position 22. My top level domain is .com. Excellent. We're almost done here. So now I just want to run through a couple of uh, if statements that will do some basic checks to see if this email address is structured in a, an appropriate way for an email address.